Hello everyone, a very welcome to Vyas Edification Quota. So today in the series of NCRT discussion, we are going to discuss a chapter from class 12, that is chapter number 7, Evolution. Now this chapter contains total 10 questions in it and we are going to talk about each and every question in this session. So let's begin with this session and the first question of this chapter we have is explain antibiotic resistance observed in bacteria in light of Darwinian selection theory. Alright, so we have to explain antibiotic resistance in bacteria according to the natural selection theory of Darwin. So according to Darwin's natural selection theory, only those organisms who can adapt to their changing environment will survive and those who cannot embrace the change in the environment will be eliminated. So the organisms tend to acquire some characteristics in them to cope up with the changing environment and they finally survive. Right? This is what the Darwin's natural selection theory, natural selection theory says that only organisms that can adapt to their changing environment will be surviving and those who cannot embrace the change in their environment will be eliminated. The organisms sometimes tend to acquire some characteristics, some methods in them to cope up or in order to survive into their environment and to increase their population. Now, when people started using antibiotic, if we talk about the antibiotic resistance, then when people started using antibiotic penicillin, most of the bacteria were susceptible to this antibiotic penicillin and were easily killed by this antibiotic. But however, some, uh, however, with the time, bacteria adapted to it, bacteria developed some methods to fight with this antibiotic penicillin and they survived even in the presence of this particular penicillin antibiotic. This is what the antibiotic resistance in bacteria were observed according to the Darwin's selection theory. Now let's write the answer of this question. If we talk about or if you want to write the answer, we will writing like this. We will write, we will start this answer with according, according Darwin's, according Darwin's natural selection theory. Only those organisms, only those organisms who can adapt to their changing environment, changing environment will survive will survive and those who cannot embrace the change that means who cannot adapt their environmental changes will be embrace the changes in their changes in their environment will be eliminated will be eliminated Right? So, only the organisms who can adapt the changes in their environment will be surviving and those who cannot embrace the change or cannot adapt the changes in their environment will be eliminated from the world or from the population. Right? Will be eliminated. So, organisms who 
intend to acquire tend to acquire the characteristics characteristics in order to in order to survive in the changed environment and increase their population increase their population now when people started when people started using antibiotic using anti biotic penicillin antibiotic penicillin most of the bacteria most of the bacteria were susceptible to this to this antibiotic to this anti biotic most of the bacteria were susceptible to this antibiotic and actually with time they adapted right uh, so what happens when people started using antibiotic penicillin most of the bacteria most of the bacteria were susceptible to this antibiotic penicillin and with time with time also we will add here however however with time they adapted however with time they adapted or acquired this is or or they acquired some methods to fight with this antibiotic penicillin right and they survived and they survived even in the presence of penicillin right this is the uh, this is what we call that resistant the bacteria has become resistant to the particular antibiotic right some organisms we know that according to the darwin's natural selection theory those organisms who cannot adapt the changes in their environment will be eliminated right but when some organisms living organisms adapt changes and they acquire some characteristics or some methods to fight or to cope up with their changing environment they tend to survive and they increases their population this is what here actually happening the bacteria who were used to killed by the penicillin antibiotic were actually with time they adapted uh, they adapted some special characteristics or some methods to fight with the antibiotic penicillin and they finally get survived even in the presence of penicillin antibiotic so this is the complete solution of question number 1 so now we have a second question to discuss find out from newspaper and popular science articles any new fossil discoveries or controversies about evolution okay if we talk, uh, if we were talk about this question what is paleontology this is a question first of all what is pa paleontology 
paleontology is basically a field of science which helps us uh, which helps us to understand the information about evolution with the help of usage of fossils right what is paleontology it is basically a, a field of science which helps us to understand about evolution with the help of usage of fossils now if you talk about what uh, fossils of dinosaurs we found fossils of dinosaurs that have revealed the evolution of reptiles during the period of jurassic right now in the recent time two unusual fossils were found in the china and they actually brings up the controversy over the evolution of birds Conficusaurus is actually uh, the crow-sized crow -sized bird which were living during the period of Cretaceous in China which is the genus of extinct birds, primitive birds. So this is what we have according to the newspaper and popular science articles and discoveries and controversies about evolution in the recent time. So let's write the answer of this question. Let's write answer of this question here. So answer number two, we'll be writing from pan paleontology. Paleontology is the field of science. Paleontology is the field of science which helps us, which helps us to understand, which helps us to understand the evolution, which helps to understand the evolution. with the help of fossils right now example fossils of dinosaurs fossils of dinosaurs were found right we found the fossils of dinosaurs that have revealed that have revealed the evolution of that have revealed the evolution of reptiles reptiles during the during the Jurassic period Jurassic period now if we talk about according to newspaper and some science articles if we talk about some discoveries or controversies related to evolution then in the recent times two unusual two unusual fossils were found were found in China were found in China Confucius Norsis lived lived during the Cretaceous period Cretaceous period in China which is the genus of the primitive
crow-sized birds. All right, so this is the solution of question number two. We have completed the solution of question number two. Now here we have a third question and the third question is asking a attempt giving a clear definition of the term species. So we have to give the definition of species. So species is a group of organism that is able to interbreed and produce fertile offsprings are called as species. And the member of one species is not going to breed with the member of other species. So this is the solution and now we are going to write the answer of question number three. So a group of organism, a group of organism which is able to interbreed, which is able to interbreed which is able to interbreed and produce and produce fertile offspring, fertile offspring and produce of fertile offsprings are called, are called as species, right? So this is your definition, a clear definition of species and the members and the members of one species will not breed with the members of another species. Right? So this is your a clear definition of species and with this we have completed the solution of question number three. So now we'll be talking about question number four and this question number four is asking try to trace the various components of human evolution and we have given hint like brain size and function, skeletal structure and their dietary preference. So we have to trace the human, uh, human evolution, right? And I have bought some pictures of the organism in the evolution of human. So first the evolved organism in the evolution of human were Dryopithecus. Then this is the picture of Ramapithecus. Then this is your picture of Australopithecus. After Australopithecus who were evolved? Homo habilis were evolved. Then after Homo habilis the Homo erectus were evolved. Right, the first picture is showing you Dryopithecus, then this picture is showing you Ramapithecus, this is your Australopithecus and after Australopithecus who were evolved? Homo habilis were evolved. After Homo habilis, Homo erectus were evolved and after Homo erectus who were evolved? Homo Neanderthals were evolved. After Homo uh, Neanderthals, who were evolved? Homo sapiens were evolved. After Homo Neanderthals, Homo sapiens were evolved. So this is the pattern of human evolution. Now we'll be talking about the uh, human evolution and we'll be talking about the skeletal structure of each of the organism in the human population and we'll be talking about the brain capacity of each of them and we are going to talk about the food preference of each of the organism in the human population, right? Now, if we talk about, let's uh, see uh, once again the pictures of all these organisms and let's write the names of them, Dryopithecus this is, this is Dryopithecus, right? Now if we talk about the next one, that is this one, this is your Ramapithecus, Ramapithecus, 
Then this is your Australopithecus. Australo Pithecus and this is your Homo Homo habilis Homo habilis this is Homo Homo erectus Homo erectus after Homo erectus who were evolved Homo Neanderthals, these were Homo Neanderthals. Then after Homo Neanderthals, Homo Sapiens were evolved. Right, Homo Sapiens were evolved. Now we are going to make a table and the solution for this question number four let's try to make uh, let's make a table here we are going to talk about the name of organism right name of organism then we'll be talking about the brain capacity of each organism then we'll be talking about the skeletal structure skeletal structure and then last we'll be talking about food preferences. Food preferences. So let's begin with this. The first organism we have is Dryopithecus. Dryopithecus. Right? If we talk about the brain capacity of Dryopithecus, first of all, the first organism who were evolved in the evolution of human or towards the evolution of human, that were Dryopithecus, who were more ape-like, who were more ape-like. So Dryopithecus, if we talk about the, that one, the, that was the first organism who were evolved or who was evolved during the process of evolution of human. If we talk about brain capacity, the brain capacity of Dryopithecus is not known. It is not known. Right? And if we talk about the skeletal structure, skeletal structure of Dryopithecus, as I said, they were more ape-like, so the skeletal structure were bent of them and they were more ape-like. They were more ape-like. And if you talk about food preferences of these Dryopithecus, then they ate soft fruits. Soft fruits and leaves. Soft fruits and leaves. Right? The next after this Dryopithecus, who were evolved? Rama Pithecus were evolved. Rama Pythacus were evolved and if you talk about the brain capacity of Rama Pythacus, this is also not known. The brain capacity of Rama Pythacus is also not known. Now if we talk about the po uh, posture or skeletal structure of Rama Pythacus, then they were semi-erect. They were semi-erect. And they were more like human. They were more like human and not were more like two apes, right? Now, if we talk about what were the food preferences of Ramapithecus, then they ate seeds and nut. Seeds and nuts, right? Now, after Ramapithecus, who were evolved? After Ramapithecus, Australopithecus were evolved. Australopithecus were evolved. After Ramapithecus, Australopithecus were evolved. And if we talk about the brain capacity of them, they were having 500 cc of brain capacity. They were erect. They were found to be erect. And if we talk about food preferences of Australopithecus, they were found to be herbivores. They were herbivores, right? Now, after Australopithecus, who were evolved? Homo habilis were evolved. 
after Australopithecus, Homo habilis were evolved who were having 650 to 800 cc of brain capacity after Australopithecus. Homo habilis were evolved and the brain capacity if we talk about they were having 650 to 800 cc and if we talk about the posture or skeletal structure of them they were found to be erect right they were also erect now if we talk about the food preferences of Homo habilis they were found to be carnivores they were carnivores. Now after Homo habilis the evolve the evolution of Homo erectus was done. Who evolved after Homo habilis? Homo erectus were evolved with the brain capacity of 900 cc right homo erectus were evolved after homo habilis and they were having 900 cc of brain capacity if we talk about skeletal structure they were also erect they were also erect and if we talk about the food preference of homo erectus they were found to be omni Vorus. They were found to be omnivorous. Now after Homo erectus, who were evolved? Homo neanderthals. Homo neanderthals were evolved with the brain capacity of 1400 cc right with the capacity of 1400 cc and uh, if we talk about the posture or skeletal structure of homo neanderthals they were also erect they were also erect and the food preferences of neanderthals or homo neanderthals were also be also found to be omni Vorous, right? They were eating both plants and animals. So, after Homo erectus, Homo neanderthals were uh, evolved, and after Homo ne neanderthals, Homo sapiens, V, Homo sapiens or humans were evolved finally. Homo sapiens, right? Homo sapiens or humans were evolved with the brain capacity of 1200 to 1600 cc right after homo neanderthals homo sapiens humans were evolved with the ca brain capacity of 1200 cc to 1600 cc they were also erect of course they were also erect and also they were found to be omni Vorus. They were also found to be omnivorous. So this is a table uh, which is showing you the brain capacity, skeletal structure and food preferences of all the organisms who were evolved during the evolution of humans. And with this we have completed the solution of question number 4. Well, let's talk about the next question that is question number 5. Find out through internet and popular science articles whether animals other than men have self-consciousness or not all right if we talk about self-consciousness what is self-consciousness first of all it is awareness of oneself self-consciousness is awareness of oneself right now other than men some animals are also self-conscious that means they have self-conscious some animals are there other than men who are self-conscious about themselves for example elements are self-conscious dolphins are self-conscious chimpanzees are self-conscious apes and monkeys are also self-conscious now self-consciousness in animals can be studied with the help of using mirror test right now when chimpanzees were exposed for the first time to the mirror when chimpanzees were exposed to the mirror for the very first time they were threatened however on repeated exposure to the mirror they started grooming they started looking into the mirror and started picking their nose making the faces etc so with the help of mirror testing we can study the self-consciousness in animals right so other than men some animals have self-consciousness in them now this is your answer and we are going to write the answer for this 
we'll be starting with the self consciousness here self consciousness is the awareness of one self of one self right what is self consciousness it is the awareness of one self and if we talk about some animals other than man have self consciousness or not yes yes other than man other than men some animals some animals like elephant dolphin elephant dolphin apes monkeys chimpanzees etc have self consciousness right now self consciousness in animals in animals can be studied can be studied with the help of with the help of mirror test with the help of mirror test right in animals you can study the self consciousness with the help of mirror test and when this test was done when the test was done with the chimpanzees so we'll be writing when chimpanzees chimpanzees were exposed were exposed to the mirror to the mirror for the first time they were threatened they were threatened however however when expo when the repeated when the exposure exposure to the mirror to the mirror repeated when the exposure to the mirror repeated they started looking into it they started looking into it and grooming and grooming also they started picking also they started picking their nose making faces etc making faces etc right so with the help of mirror test we can easily study whether the animal is having self consciousness or not and with this we have completed the solution of question number 5 now let's talk about question number 6 list 10 modern day animals and using the internet sources link it to a corresponding ancient fossils name both so we have to name both type of organisms that is modern day organisms along with their ancient fossils so i'll be making here a list of 10 modern day organisms or animals with their ancient fossils and we'll be writing answer in the left column we'll be writing modern day modern 
डे एनिमल्स एंड इन द राइट कॉलम विल बी राइटिंग एंशियंट फॉसल्स एंशियंट फॉसल्स ऑल राइट सो इफ यू टॉक अबाउट सम मॉडर्न एनिमल्स देन फर्स्ट वी हैव इज ह्यूमन लेट सपोज वील बी टॉकिंग ह्यूमन human is kind of animal of course and is a modern day animal right so if you talk about ancient fossils of humans then we have rama pithecus rama pithecus is the fossil which is uh, actually uh, giving evidence of human so we'll be writing rama pithecus rama pithecus then let's talk about second one if we talk about let's say elephant which is also a modern day animal then we have morithris morithris then if we talk about the third one third one we have let's suppose uh, gorilla gorilla then ancient fossil for gorilla would will, will be uh, dryopithecus human for human we have Ram, uh, ramapithecus for elephant we have morithris and then we have gorilla as a modern day animal and for gorilla we have dryopithecus as fossil ancient fossil dryo pithecus then next if we talk about the fourth one then for horse let's uh, let's suppose we talk about horse for horse we have ancient fossil as ancient fossil as eo eo hippus eo hippus eo hippus is the ancient fossil for modern day horses right next if we talk about the fifth one then we have fifth one a fifth one as a bat which is a modern day animal then if we talk about the ancient uh, fossil ancient fossil for bat then we have archeo nysteris archeo nysteris archeo nysteris is the fossil ancient fossil for bat then if we talk about next one that is for fish let's say uh, modern day animal is fish and if we talk about the ancient fossil of fish then we have arandespis aran despis as the ancient fossil for fish then if we talk about next one that is your octopus let's say for octopus for octopus we have ancient fossil such as belam night belam night and the next one we have is eight one for eight one we have dog as the modern day animal and for modern day animal such as dog we have some ancient fossil such as your lep lepio sion lepio sion or leptio sion leptio sion then the next one the ninth ninth one we talk about is giraffe giraffe and the tenth one we'll be talking about whale and if we talk about the ancient fossils for giraffe and whale for giraffe we'll be having paleotragus paleotragus p a l a e paleo a e o tragus and for whale and for whale we have ancient fossil such as your protocetus proto cetus so this is a list of some modern day animals and their ancient fossils which i have bought from the source of internet right you can also make a list of some modern day animals and ancient animals or ancient fossils of each of them and you can make a separate lit list of all these organisms also or for different animals also you can take any animal you can take any modern day animal and you will search it on internet you will find 
ancient fossil for the particular animal you are listing in your copies right so this is a list which i have been made and with this we have completed the solution number six now let's discuss question number seven and here we have question number seven practice drawing various animals and plants so uh, I have bought some picture which is showing you various animals and plants uh, from your NCRT. This picture is from your NCRT of course and is showing you different uh, plants like uh, cry, uh, you're having mosses, then you're having ferns, gymnosperms, angiosperms. These are the different kind of plants, right? Some land, plant, land plants, then vascular plants and seed plants are depicted in the picture and this picture is only from your NCRT. And then we have a picture of animals, right? Animals uh, picture showing you Trinosaurus, Pteridon, then we are having Crocodilian, Archaeopteryx, and then we have Branchiosaurus and Sterosaurus. All right, so we have a picture showing you different kind of animals, and we are uh, not actually making the diagrams of various kinds of plants and animals right now let's discuss question number eight describe one example of adaptive radiation so before moving on to the example of adaptive radiation let's talk, talk about adaptive radiation what is adaptive radiation it is actually the evolutionary process adaptive radiation is the evolutionary process by which many species originate from one species in an area right what is uh, adaptive radiation it is the evolutionary process by which many species originate from one species in a particular area this is what you call adaptive radiation now the phenomena of adaptive radiation was first observed by a scientist named as darwin when he was traveling to a place called as galapagos island right so this is what we call adaptive radiation and was first observed by darwin when he was traveling to the galapagos island now if we talk about the example of adaptive radiation then we have a very classic example of it such as if we talk about the ancestral seed eating darwin's finches seed eating darwin finches were diversified on the basis of type of food that were plant insect cactus seeds etc were available right now the beak of these darwin finches the beak of these darwin finches adapted to the different kind of foods and got modified accordingly this is what we call adaptive radiation now the geographical isolation led to the reproductive isolation the geographical isolation led to the reproductive isolation and actually resulted into the formation of a new species of darwin finches right so this is yeah, here we have example of adaptive radiation now let's write answer for this question so we'll be starting the answer of this as adaptive radiation adaptive radiation is the evolutionary process is evolutionary evolutionary process by which it is the evolutionary process by which many species many species originate many species originate from one species from one species in a particular area in a particular area right so what is adaptive radiation adaptive radiation is the evolutionary process by which many species originate from one species in a particular area and the phenomena the phenomena of adaptive radiation phenomena of adaptive 
radiation was first observed was first observed by a scientist Darwin by a scientist Darwin when he was traveling to the place when he was traveling to a place called as Galapagos Island. Now if we talk about the example of adaptive radiation, we have a very classic example for this. For example, the ancestral seed eating ancestral seed eating Darwin's finches Darwin's finches were diversified by were diversi fight on the basis of on the basis of types of food types of food like plants seeds insects cactus available to them available to them right and also the geographical or uh, sorry not geographical we will be writing the beak the beak of these finches the beak of these finches which are actually birds adapted adapted to these different foods to these different foods and got modified and got modified accordingly right and they got modified accordingly and also the geographical isolation the geographical isolation led to the reproductive isolation reproductive isolation which resulted which resulted into the formation of new species new species of finches right so this is what we call adaptive radiation and this adaptive radiation phenomena was first observed by darwin and we have example for this adaptive radiation as these ancestral seed eating darwin's finches were diversified and from this ancestral seed eating darwin's finches many species of these finches were evolved on the basis of different food different types of food available to them and the beaks of these finches which are actually but the beak of these finches adapted to these different kind of foods and got modified accordingly and also in the making of new species of finches the geographical 
uh, isolation and reproductive isolation has took place, right? Uh, they also contributed. So this is your complete solution of question number eight. Let's talk about next question. That is question number nine. Can we call human evolution as adaptive radiation? All right. So we know that what is adaptive radiation? Adaptive radiation is the evolutionary process by which many species originate from one particular species in a particular area. Right? This is what we call adaptive radiation. Uh, adaptive radiation is a evolutionary process. It is an evolutionary process by which many species diversifies or many species originates from one species in a particular area. Right? And it is a quick process. Adaptive radiation is actually a quick process. But if we talk about human evolution, the human evolution is a slow and gradual process. It is a slow and gradual process and which is making it different from adaptive radiation. So we cannot call human evolution as adaptive radiation, right? Now let's talk about, let's write answer of 9. We'll be writing like this, adaptive radiation. We will start this answer uh, writing from adaptive radiation. Adaptive radiation. Adaptive radiation is the evolutionary process, right? Adaptive radiation is the evolutionary process by which, by which the many species, by which many species originates by which many species originates from one species in a particular area in a particular area right in a particular area this is what we call adaptive radiation and it is a quick process and it is a quick process whereas the human evolution whereas the human evolution is whereas the human evolution is a slow and gradual process which makes it different which makes it different from which makes it different from the adaptive radiation adaptive radiation right so human evolution is actually a slow and gradual process of evolution which is making it different from the adaptive radiation so we cannot call the human evolution as adaptive radiation right we cannot call the human evolution as the adaptive radiation right so this is your complete solution of question number nine so now we'll be talking about the last question of this session last question of this chapter and using various resources such as your school library or the internet and discussion with your teacher trace the evolutionary stages of any one animal say horse so we have to trace the evolution of horse and i have bought the written answer for those students who find difficulties in writing the answers in english and this is your source from internet which is showing you the evolutionary process of horse so if we talk about the solution of question number 10 or answer number 10 then the evolution of horse
they started the evolution of horse was actually started with eohippus during the period eocene right so evolutionary process or evolution of horse was started with eohippus that is your ancient fossil eohippus is the ancient fossil of horse which was found which was actually living in the period of eocene now if we talk about some changes or some characters or evolutionary stages of uh, horse then they are as follows that first is increase gradual increase in the body size gradual increase in the body size this is your stages of these are the stages of evolution of horses right horse evolution of horse we are talking about stages of evolution of horse right so first we have is increase gradual increase in their body size then second is elongation of head and neck region elongation of head and neck region then also we can see the increase in the length of limbs and feet then if we talk about the next stage that is gradual reduction of lateral digits gradual reduction of lateral digits then if we talk about next we have enlargement we have seen the enlargement of third functional toe right this has been reduced or enlargement this has been enlarged and we can see the enlargement of third functional so then if we talk about next that is strengthening of the back strengthening of the back so we can ride the horse we can uh, we we, are, we can sit the we, we can sit sit on the horse right we ride the horse so strengthening of the back of horses have been seen then if we talk about the next stage is development of brain and sensory organs development of brain and sensory organs then the last stage the last stage is increase in the complexity of teeth for feeding of grasses right so these all are the stages of evolution of horses then if we talk about the evolution of horse here we are having evolution of horse first ancient fossil or the ancient fossil if we talk about of horse is eohippus or i may say that the evolution of horse was started with organism known as eohippus eohippus in the period of eocene that is why we call the ancient fossil of horse is eohippus right that was living during the period of eocene so let's begin with the evolution of horse and here we have the first organism is eohippus right eohippus and it had a short head short head and neck it was having short head and neck then it had four functional toes four functional toes are also present in the modern day horses first if we talking about eohippus that is the ancient fossil or ancient organism of horses so it was having short head and short neck they also were having four functional toes and a splint of 1 and 5 on each hind limb and a splint of 1 and 3 in each four limbs right also here eohippus were having molars that were short crowned and that were adapted for grinding the plant diet this information is about eohippus then after eohippus the next evolution take place and the organism evolve after eohippus was mesohippus after eohippus mesohippus was evolved and if you talk about some characters of mesohippus then it was slightly taller than the eohippus it was slightly taller than eohippus and it has three toes in each foot it had three toes in each foot now then after mesohippus the organism evolved during the evolution of horse that was merychippus after eohippus who was evolved mesohippus evolved after mesohippus merychippus were evolved now let's talk about the characteristics of merychippus 
it had the size of approximately 100 centimeter they were 100 centimeter in size and although it still had three toes in each foot just like meso hippus they were also the merry chippers were also having three toes in the each foot in their each foot just like meso hippus but it could run on one toe but it could run one so this is the evolution which was actually depicted in the Mary Chippers, right? Now the side toe did not, not touch the ground. The side toe did not touch the ground and the molars of Mary Chippers were adapted for chewing the grass, right? Now after Mary Chippers, during the evolution of horses who was evolved, Fleohippus were evolved. Fleohippus. After Mary Chippers, Fleohippus were evolved. First organism evolved in the uh, evolution of horse were Eohippus, then Mesohippus were evolved, then Merichippus were evolved, then Fleohippus were evolved, and then last, the modern day horse were evolved, which is also known as Ichus, right? Ichus. Now, if you talk about the characteristics of Fleohippus, it resembled the modern horse. They were actually more like modern horses, right? Now, and was around 108 centimeter tall. They were 108 centimeter tall. It had a single functional toe with splint of second and fourth in each limb, right? And then after the modern day horses were evolved, which is also known as Equus. Now, if you talk about the characteristics of Equus, Fleohippus gave rise to Ichus. That is very obvious and very clear that Fleohippus gave rise to modern horses known as Ichus on the modern or the modern horse with one toe in each foot. Modern day horses or Ichus are having only one toe in their foot and they have incisors for cutting grasses and molars for grinding food. This is the evolution of modern day horses, right? The modern day horses or Ichus having incisors, incisors for chewing the grasses, for cutting the grasses and they have molars for grinding the food so this is what we are having the evolution of horses this is your representation of horses first organism during the evolution of horse were eochippus then mesochippus were evolved then merichippus were evolved and after merichippus fleohippus were evolved and finally after fleochippus the modern day horses known as equus were evolved so this is your evolution of Horse. Also, I have bought some pictures showing you the different kind of organisms in the evolution of horses. See, these are some pictures of all the organisms of evolution of horses. So, let's write what are these. The first picture you are seeing on the screen is of Eohippus, right? This is your Eohippus. So this is your Eohippus with short head and short neck, right? Then after Eohippus who was evolved, Mesohippus were evolved. Mesohippus were evolved, right? So this is a picture showing you Mesohippus with elongated head and neck, right? Then you can see after Mesohippus, Mary Chippus, Mary Chippus were evolved. Mary Chippus were evolved, right? After Mesochippus, Mary Chippus were evolved. And after Mary Chippus, who were evolved? Fleohippus were evolved. So this is your Fleohippus. And they were more like modern day horses. See, you can see they were more modern, modern day. They were more like modern day horses. The modern day horses here, we are having this as modern day horse, which is also known as equus. 
right? So this is your picture showing you different organisms in the evolution of horses. We're having Eohippus and we're also having ancient fossils of uh, horses like you're uh, having Eohippus. Eohippus, then we're having Mesohippus, Merichippus, Fleohippus uh, and we're finally we're having modern day horses as Equus. So this is your complete solution of question number 10. Now with this, we are ending this session. This is all for today. Thank you and have a nice day.